Hello everyone, my name is Amanda and welcome back to another video of The Plenty Mandy. Alright y'all, the moment is here. <laughs> I finally got one of um, the larger Hoyer shipments uh, from Thailand yesterday. And I got this from Ah Hoyer Nursery. So if you guys have not heard of them yet, you should check them out because they are actually one of the larger and more established Hoyer Nursery in Thailand, at least in the retail setting. Um, so because wholesale is another story. But anyway, um, I got them yesterday. And the reason I said it's finally is because I actually ordered this from in like May or April. I forgot something like that. And I told them to hold it, um, you know, hold it to ship later because of the whole COVID situation, because it's a larger shipment and there's a lot of plants in there. They're all large plants. I want to make sure that, you know, the delay situation um, has improved before they ship it. So yeah, I finally have them to ship it to me like, you know, maybe a week ago. And then it's got to me yesterday morning, which is great. Um, but yeah, so I know that they are not taking order right now till January 2021, I think, because they are just so busy and back order. Um, so yeah, so, um, but still check out their website, uh, check out their Facebook page, they're really active on Facebook. So you can order, uh, you know, from them via, I think, email or like uh, Facebook Messenger. Um, but yeah, check them out and, you know, get your wish list ready for 2021. <laughs> because why not? You can always have more Hoyas, right? Um, but yeah, anyway, I got an order from them and I'm going to show you what I order. So there's 20 of them. And because I ordered more than 12 Hoyas this time. So basically in the United States, if you order more than 12, meaning that 13 or up, you will need an import permit. Um, I think it will be also a great opportunity for me to go over like a little bit of the, um, you know, background information about applying for permit if you're in the United States. So I don't, I'm not familiar with the import regulations and policy in other country, but, you know, at least I can go over, you know, what did I do in the United States? I'm in California, by the way. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to go for a little bit of background information for that. Um... And I hope that's helpful because that's one of the most frequently asked questions I got on social media is like, you know, how do I apply for permits? Where do I go? So yeah, so it's going to be a long <laughs> video. So we should get started. So before we get started, two or three disclaimers. So number one, the following process that I'm going over is, you know, only apply to the United States because that's where I am at. Um, I'm not familiar with the regulations or permits or, you know, laws from another, uh, of another country. So this is for United States and I'm in California, if that helps. And secondly, I have some technical difficulty um, uh, when I'm filming this. So I cannot do a split screen somehow um, mm -hmm. for some reason. So, um, but it's okay. I have my laptop right here. So if I'm looking at it this way. <laughs> It's mean that I'm looking at my laptop. So I'm, um, I will go over, so I can still go over step-by-step -step policies with you or uh, yeah, step-by-step -step pauses with you. And then I'll post like a screenshot or something on the side. So that way you can actually see what I'm doing. And then you guys can have some visual A. So you know when you go to applying for permit, like, you know, go applying for permit, like what you're actually looking for. And last but not least, I do not work for AFIS. I, I do not work for the department of agriculture. So the following information I'm giving you, it's purely from my own research and my own experience. So if I make any mistake or if I misspeak, uh, just, you know, feel free to correct me in the comment below. Like I would love to learn something new from you guys too. So anyway, with that out of the way, uh, let's apply for permits. So in the United States, um, if you import more than 12 plants at a time, you need a permit. So meaning that if you import 13 or more plants in one shipment, you need a permit because otherwise your plant may get destroyed or confiscated. Just not good, right? So yeah, you want to apply for the permits. That's reason number one. And the second reason you want to apply for a import plants import permits is because when you apply, when you have a permits, um, your shipment actually goes straight to a uh, an inspection pond so it may it may 
I'm not saying it it will, but it may help you to speed up the uh the process. Like it may help you to speed up the shipment speed because you know um instead of stuck stuck in the custom um the pens will go to a specific inspection point. So that's why uh, at the beginning I decided to apply for permits. So anyway, um in the United States you have to go to uh Avis, not the past Avis, but <laughs> Avis A P H I S S, which stands for Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service, and they are um a division of the U S Department of Agriculture. So if you want to um you know anything of like animal health, animal welfare, plant health, biotechnology, and stuff like that, you have to go for them. So anyway, you will go to the Avis website. So it's basically avis.usda.gov. So I'm gonna you know put it somewhere here. So once you go to the Avis website. I'm looking at my laptop right now. So once you go to the Avis website, what you you know you you will have different options here. You can go to import and export. By the way, I know there's like gonna be other ways to get to the same page, but you know this is just what I normally would do. So once you get to the import and export page, you will see on the left hand side, you would go to permits. So once you get to permits, you have to pick what kind of permits you want. So you want to go to plants or plants products because that's what we are trying to import, right? So from here, right, you will go to this page that it's a little bit more confusing because you know the 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 before step is pretty easy, right? You just go to like you just. Click permits, plan permits. But once you get to this page, you'll see there's like different, different type of permits that you can apply for, um, even just for plants itself. So they all start with PPQ. So PPQ stands for Plants Protection Quarantine, and um, you know you'll see like PPQ five, 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 seven, five, four, six. There's like a bunch of them. So from here. You want to click on if you are just like me, just trying to apply for like permits to import plants for hob hobbyists. You know, you will want to apply for PPQ five eight seven. So once you go to pay, I don't know how many times I can say it. Once you go to PPQ five eight seven, uh, which is application for permits to import plants and plants product, you can click on, and then there's still like after you you after you decided you want to apply for five x seven, there's still a bunch of stuff that you can click on. So, uh, for example, like you know, plants on planting, fruits and vegetables information, rice, corn, um, foreign cotton. Like so, there's like all this different type of stuff that it's like governed under PPQ five x seven. So you can click on plants for planting, including seeds, because again, that's what we are trying to import. From here, you can apply for permit. So when you apply for permit, there's like you know two ways to do it. So you can do it the old-fashioned way, which is like print out the form and then like um, mail it. But you know, obviously we're gonna not do that. <laughs> we're gonna do the uh, online filing. So once you click on the online filing, um, you would have to create accounts and all this stuff, right? And one step that I want to everything else is pretty standard, but one thing I want to point out is um. You do have to go through a identity verify um process. So they basically would have to verify that you know you are you, like you're not like pretending to be someone else to apply for plan permit to import something that is unlawful into the United States. But anyway, you do have to go through that. If I remember, I can't remember exactly, but I remember correct. It's pretty fast. Like if it's not within, if it's not instantly, it's like within like. A couple hours that they verify your identity, but once you verify um, your identity with them, um, the rest of the process is pretty easy. So you basically just, um, you know, create accounts and then verify your identity, and then you will go to actually fill the application. Um, so the, again, the application is pretty, you know, straightforward as well. Just like name, your information, your address, obviously. Um, however, there's a couple of things that, if I remember correctly. Is uh you may want to pay attention. Uh, number one is the country of uh imports, like where you importing from. So you do have to specify like oh Thailand, Indonesia, or whatnot. And the other thing you have to spec specifically tell them is uh what kind of genus or what kind of like uh specific plants that you're importing. 
um, forms because you know the permanent specific. Like for example, when I fill out the application, I put you know country of origin is like Thailand because that's where I mainly get my Hoyas, and then I um, I put like the genus is like Hoya spa, like you know basically any species of Hoya. So this is what I did. But once you fill out all that, you can submit it um, uh, electronically. Um, when I apply for it, it was free. Okay, I think it's still free. Like I'm not a hundred percent sure because you know it was a while ago I applied for it, but it, it was free. I think it's still free, and then you can submit the application. And I waited not long at all. I remember I waited for maybe at most three days before they send me an email and tell me that you're good to go. So yeah, so that's basically how you apply for import permit. It's like super easy. It's not intimidating at all. And I did it all on my own. Like I basically just, okay, you know, Google. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so that's how you do it. All right, so let's, let's talk about, let's talk about what happened after your permit is approved. So they will email you, right? So they email you two main emails. So one is just basically like the information of like, you know, what kind of permit you apply for and all the details like countries and species and stuff like that. And the second email is very important because they actually would email you the, the permit itself, like the physical permits. And they're, um, they are specific, like each permit is specific. That's very important. Um, meaning that, you know, each permit, like each label can only be used once, right? So I remember when I got it, there were eight labels, right? So each label can only be used once, so you cannot like photocopy it <laughs> and then use it again. So basically that's how specific it is. So bear in mind. So what you want to do is after you get your permit and the email and all the stuff, you want to forward it. Um, you know, email it forwarded to um, your importers, like whoever gonna like ship your plants, because they would have to print those labels out, the specific one, um, in color, and put it on top of your sh shipment box. Because when those plants get to uh, the costume, um, the costume uh, staff will know that, okay, this is for PPQ, like plant products quarantine. So they would have to actually have uh, the APHIS inspection agents to inspect it. So, yep, so that's how specific they are. So I'm going to show you what it actually looked like because I did save the box again from yesterday. So, first of all, this is the box. It's pretty big because it's 20 large plants, but they did a really good job in packing. So the more important thing is I want to show you. First of all, let me cover my address here. There you go. Perfect. Let's see. <laughs> so, so this is the green and yellow label I'm talking about. So like I said, our Hoya has been around for a while and they know what they're doing. So this is exactly what they need to do is to put this label that I emailed them, print it out in color. They have to print it out in color, make sure that. And that's why it's important to find someone who know what they're doing. So uh, print it in color. And then on here, I know it's very hard to read, but you know, basically it say it's uh, quarantine material. So this is the important part. Deliver to US Department of Agriculture, Animal and Plant Health inspection service, plants protection and quarantine. And then on here, I know you cannot see it, but I'm going to read it to you. Um, it say it's San Francisco, USDA, Avis, PPQ. And then it will give you the specific, give the custom the specific address of the Avis inspection pond. And that's why I feel like this helped to speed up the process a little bit, just because, um, you know, it will go strictly to Avis instead of like sitting in custom and wait, right? And you can see there's a barcode here. There's the permit number here. And that's why each label is specific. So make sure that, you know, um, don't think that you can just say, oh, I use up my labels. I can photocopy it. No, you may have to reapply for it. So I haven't used up all my label yet. So I cannot um, tell you, you know, if, if that's, you know, what, what's the process after that. All right, so anyway, that's basically how the whole 
permanent things work. I hope that's give you a little bit of information, um, you know, on on what is going on. What is this permanent thing? Like, is it hard? Is it complicated? It's not. It's super easy to be honest. But yeah, you know, if you have any question, you can just feel free to leave it in comments. Uh, but legs, <laughs> we're gonna go to the fun part, which is look at all the Hoyas I got. All right, so as I show you earlier, the box is pretty big um, because there's like 20 plants and they're all bigger plants. Um, on top of the box, you saw the um, import permanent stick on it. And the other thing that you will also see on top of the box is the phyto sanitary certificate. Um, so I want to make it really clear that the import permanent does not, do not, does not uh, replace or excuse the phytosanitary certificate. No matter what kind of permits you have, you still have to have the phytosanitary certificate. Let's say it like 50 times. Phytosanitary certificate. Uh, you know, to, <laughs> to prove that your plants um, are diseased and pest free. So if you want more information about the phytosanitary certificate, make sure you check out my other two videos uh, for uh, importing uh, plants from overseas because I did go over uh, more in details like you know what kind of regulations you have to pay attention to when you uh, import plants and one of them being is the phytosanitary certificate <laughs> so anyway you'll see those stuff on top of the box and you open the box and then you see uh, another copy of the phyto I'm just call it phyto phyto and then you will also see a copy of your permit um, you know in the box so anyway, um, I got this yesterday, so I already uh, did my, you know, soaking. So again, you know, check out my other video, like, because I did do like a rehab video on showing you step by step, what do I do to lure the plants back to health, um, you know, when I first got it. But yeah, so anyway, I soaked it yesterday because of how big it is, how much it is. I don't have enough, I don't have a bucket that is large enough or even enough buckets to soak it. So I basically just fill my bathtub with uh, water and some, you know, fertilizers and just, you know, put all of them in the bathtub. I know I really don't, I don't like that idea because I feel like it's a waste of water, but I have no other place <laughs> that I can actually soak that many plants with that big of a plant. So yeah, so I, I, I have to use my bathtub. So anyway, these are all soaked for six hours. And after that, I air dry them. So I like to air dry them because number one, I'm lazy. I'm not going to like wipe dry each leaves. So air drying, it's faster and more efficient. So yeah, so that's all I that's all I, I, I did last night. And number two is, is I feel like air drying is also more... Um, more effective because it's it's gonna dry the whole plant side faster but anyway um yeah so i have this 20 plants right here and um they are all still kind of dangled together um it's a mess it's very exciting but i'm also really i don't know what to do i don't know where to put all of this but yeah, so let's show you what I got. So some of this pen I already have, but I, again, I just, I'm a hoarder. I just, you know, like multiple of the same plants that they grow well in my house. I know you guys are sick of hearing me say it already, but I am that kind of person. Um, and some of them I don't have. So let's see them. So I would say, okay, so the first one is, I think, one of the largest, see they're dangled together, larger one. And this is the Hoya Viola. I think uh, Viola is a uh, cultivar. I think one of the parents is the Dekii, but I forgot the other parents. But anyway, it's a Viola. So the Viola have this side, you know, you can tell it's a Dekii cultivar because of the, like kind of like the heart shape, kind of. Cause you know, the Dekii is like more like heart shaped leaves. And then also the veining. So yeah, so this is a pretty good size viola, Hoya viola. Um, and again, you know, I'm not going to go over the root system details because I did a video on that, the rehab video again. But, uh, you know, as you can see, the root are pretty dry and pretty like stringy. Um, so what I'm probably going to do is just cut off the whole root system and then, you know, 
with this baby sub again. So this is the first one, Hoya Viola. I'm gonna go a little bit, well, not fast, but like, you know, not too detailed because um, there's a lot of them. So, uh, so the Viola is the one that I don't have already. Like I, I don't have a Viola. That's why I want one. Um, but this one, I kind of do have already. And this is the Hoya in Brincada. So I went over this Hoya in my uh like unique Hoya video because it's just it just look weird, right? It's it's like a really interesting looking, unique looking Hoyas because they have this like pocket shaped uh leaves. And some of them it's like more like open because they sh they in the nature they shingle um on the tree. And this is like my used to be my nemesis because um I actually killed like two or three of this before I actually was able to grow it successfully. Uh, and once I, you know, know, know how to grow it successfully, like I decided I want to get more. So for this plant, um, one thing I would caution you about is midi bugs. So you do really have to check into the pocket because that's where the midi bugs gonna hide. And if you don't check, and if you don't check, um, you know, carefully, um and the mini bugs will just go out of control and your leaf will start yellowing and then at that point it's kind of too late so yep it's this is a really interesting one it's a hoya in burn carter or taco hoyas that's what some people call it so yep this is the second one so they are not in any order it just they are all here i'm just gonna <laughs> You know pull them out one by one all right so this one i would say is the one that i um i i wanted for a while uh it's very it's pretty pricey in the us so i i ordered one from our hoya um but i want to say this one is probably one of the one that don't ship really well because when it's get to me the leaves are extremely thin it's like all wrinkly and thin it's like almost like it's not like it's almost dead but after i soak it um it seem it's still kind of like flimsy but it seems to be better and this is the Hoya Spa Saba yeah this guy have really uh, beautiful veining and the leaf shape it's a little bit different it's like a little bit more elongated almost like rectangle-y yeah but yeah this um it it does bounce back you know a lot more because yesterday it was all curled up and it was like you know <laughs> look like it's dead but I'm not gonna give up, right? So yeah, you can see the really beautiful red, um, you know, veining at the bottom as well. So yeah, so this is the third one. This is the Hoya Spa Saba. All right, let's move on. Okay, the fourth one. So the Saba I don't have, and this one I have. I actually have two, but again, I'm a whole, I'm a hoarder. Okay, I know, I know. I gotta, I, I will stop saying that. So this is the Hoya Callistophylla. I believe this one is a short-lived version. So I do have two uh, Callisto Fido already, uh, but those are the long leaves, I think. I used to have a short leaves, but I killed it, I think. Yeah, I, I killed it by accident because I overworked it. But anyway, this is the Callisto Fido short leaves. And again, very beautiful winging, very prominent winging. And it has the cutest baby leaves. So I, I have one that have like a baby leaves before. And yep. I really like it. That's why I got it again. It's actually come in really good shape. By the way, like if you want to order Hoya from overseas, I highly, 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 I'm not saying must, but I highly, 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 highly recommend that you order something more succulent. Because if you order like, I don't know, like a Hoya Multiflora, uh, variegata like you know there's a variegated version of Hoya Modifora it's just hard to get in the US but you can get it from Thailand or Indonesia like that's probably not going to ship super well because of how thin the leaves are so that's why you know you you kind of have to like you know consider what kind of Hoya so basic so that's why most of the Hoyas I order here are like you know a little bit more thicker leaves and succulent all right so moving on the next one is oh okay so this one have bigger leaves and um it's uh it's pretty so this is the hoya fusco marginata 
So I think um <laughs> sorry. So I think this one it's like very similar to the laterally, like you know, the one with the uh, maroon margin if you give it enough light. You can like kind of see it right now just because it's it's literally just get off the box. And yeah, and the leaf is pretty succulent. So yesterday it wasn't, okay? Before I soak it, it was like wrinkly and stuff, but today I see that it's bounced back a lot, so I'm really happy. And yep. Small run more right here. <laughs> so yep, beautiful one. Alright, y'all. Next one. Okay. So this one. Oh, okay, it's all dangled together. I don't know, man. Okay, well, hold on. I will separate that for you. Ugh. Okay. So this one I didn't order. Um I actually got um a email from uh, Netta, which is the owner, one of the owners at A Hoya, and uh, he told me that uh, one of the Hoyas that I order, which is a Hoya, which is a large Hoya Meridifia, like I'm actually really sad about it. Uh, one of my, you know, the Hoya Meridifia that I ordered is dead because of heavy rain. So he was really nice. He uh, messaged me and say, hey, I'm sorry, you know, that plant is no longer alive. <laughs> Uh, can I send you a replacement? Like, can I send you something else? And I was like, oh, okay, um, you know what you got. So he showed me this plant. It is the Hoya Waliena Waliniana. Hoya Waliniana UT152. And I was like, deal. <laughs> Look at how beautiful. It is. Look at the redness and the, oh, and so big, so large, so many. And this is in the box. It has been in the box for a week. I mean, I soak it, but you know, still, it's really good, right? So look at this. Walin Liana UT152. Yeah, it reminds me obviously of the sunset. Of oh, sunset, sorry. Hoya Sunrise um, or the Hoya Rebecca. But yeah, but this one seems to have um, la actually larger leaves and the veining is slightly different. So yeah, look at that. Oh, isn't it gorgeous? So yeah, he was really nice to like, you know, inform me and then offer me this plant instead. I was like, okay, I'll take it. I don't have this plant. I have never grown this plant before. So yeah, so if you, you guys have this plant and then want to let me know what to do with it and this special instruction, I will really appreciate it. But yep, this is another one, Hoya Wileyniana UT152. Alright, so the next one, I think it's still pretty hard to find in the US. Um, yeah, because I, I have one, I bought one like a while ago and I haven't seen it in the market at all. And it has this really beautiful um, rosy, dusty rosy color if you give it enough light. And um, I don't think I have all the branches, but this is the Hoya. St. Genetis. So you can see it have really beautiful like let me focus there you go. You have some really beautiful splash and then if you give it more light it will actually turn like red or pink. So yeah this is like part of the plants that I got because it's come in many branches so I kind of separated and I don't know where the rest is. It's probably in the pile over there. <laughs> but yeah but this is uh, one of them. So you can see like, for example, this, you can kind of see the pink on here already uh, from the from the uh, light or the sun. But yeah, it's a really beautiful one. It's pretty succulent. Um, again, you know, it's it's did dry out a little bit uh, when I when I got it in the box, but I soak it and then it seems to do better. Um, so yeah, so we'll, we'll see if I can uh, maybe propagate some of this. Okay, so I would say this is another one that the next one is the other one that I don't have. I have been wanting for a while. Um, and I this one doesn't ship well. I know that. But I really want it, so I order it. So when it came yesterday, I would say other than the um, Saba, this one is the one that is like, looked like pretty dry <laughs> and pretty dead. But again, I soak it. Um, you know, I let it rest. It seems to bounce back a little bit. And this is the Hoya Spa. Here, let me pull up the name. Hoya Spa Perec 
teddy bear. So I think this pen is called teddy bear because of its flower. It's like fussy, so it's sort of like teddy bear. So yeah, but you know, just the leaf itself is really, it's, it's really beautiful. I would say this guy actually remind me of the Hoya chicken farm. Yeah, so, yep. Yeah, it's bounced back a lot, actually. I think this pen will also turn red if you give it plenty of light. And the bottom, it's, it's kind of red, too. So, yep, the roots obviously no good. I am going to cut it off. Yay, teddy bear. I like the name. Just get it for the name, you know. All right, so next one. When I opened the box, when I saw it, I was like, oh, my God. Like, this one would be literally, literally, actually, yeah, the the biggest leaf hoy I have, I would have ever owned, you know, if I can rehab it <laughs> successfully. And this is, hold on. <sighs> this is the Hoya Gabra. Look, see, it can completely, completely cover my face. So I said it's literally the biggest because the other biggest um, leaf Hoya I have is the Hoya Lozian Drusiana, which um, I, I will put a picture like I did a head test with that one. But I think this one actually bit it. It's literally cover up my whole face. So yeah, so Hoya Gabra. So this plant is also really succulent. You can see it's a little bit red too because of the, I think it has been sun stress. Have really prominent ringing. You can see it. And there are some smaller leaves as well. The smaller leaf is still pretty big. But yeah, but the big leaf is like, it's really big. Yep. So when I open the box, I'm like, holy, it's just so amazing. Oh my God. And um, yeah, all the leaves are intact. And uh, after I soak it, it bounces back a lot. And that's why I say it's very important for you to order the right species. Like the more, that's why I like green and succulent species because they just hold up so well. Yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait for this plant to be like, you know, lures, I, I can't wait to lure this plant, plant back to health because of how how amazing it's look. Look at <sighs> Okay, Hoya Gabba. I'm so excited about this one. Alright. Actually, okay, so the next one is also a uh, larger leaves one. Because I like large leaf too. Okay. And this one I think it's pretty hard to find in the US right now. I would say it's a little bit thinner than the Gabra. And this is the Hoya Lambii. So yeah, you can see like the leaf is also pretty big, but maybe slightly smaller. And you can see the leaf shape is also different. It's like not as strong. It's more like this, like if you look at it this way, it's more like a teardrop shape, I guess. And yeah, so, but it's also really beautiful. Have really beautiful wing. And you can see it's like always a little bit thinner, right? Cause still a little bit curly up. But yeah, um, Lampii is also really pretty. I can't wait to let this back to health as well. Cool. Okay. Okay, so the next one is um, one of my favorite um, cultivar from my favorite, well, one of the cultivar from my favorite species. And this is the Hoya Canosa Slobo. Yeah, I I think this cultivar is unique because it's it just really um the leaf is a it's rounder than a lot of the um the a lot of the um canosa, but as you can see, it's hold up like I would say like fairly well. I wouldn't say it's like super well, and then I was concerned because yesterday I see all this like white powdery stuff, so I was like, is it like powdery module? So I actually soak it. Um, also, I also apply some fungal side on it. So, but yeah, so far it's it's it looks fine. I'm gonna check it again in a little bit. So yeah, so this is the Hoya Canosa Snowball. I love all the Canosa. Like I love all the Canosa cultivar. They are just like really easy to grow and easy to care for. So, cool. All right, next we are about. I would say we are about halfway full, right? I I I I didn't come. I. Yeah, I forgot to count. Okay, so this one, when I opened it yesterday, I was like, oh my god, it's so pretty. Is it like a Crassipitiola? You know, if you are familiar with that species. But it's not. And I totally forgot I ordered this. And this is the Hoya 
Hylianthus, 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 right? So if you look at it, this one is actually pretty big too, pretty long. You can look at it. It's that's why I feel like it's look like a precipitator because of it's the how the leaves look. So I would say it's a little bit rounder, and then it have this beautiful veining. And it's hold up fairly well, I would say. Not like super well because it's not like super super succulent. It's somewhat succulent. But yeah, overall I, I'm really happy because it's it's very long and it's very big. So yeah, so this is the Hoya Highlandiensis. Yay. Okay, continue. Cool, 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 cool. Oh, so this one, I already have one. I have a small one. Um, uh, Paula from Gardino Nursery was so nice that she gave me a bonus cutting once. And it was this plant. And I love the plant. I rooted it up and it's, you know, it's doing well so far. But um, I really like it. So I um, got another one. And this is the Hoya Megalester. So I really like it because of the dark green foliage. <laughs> And you can see like I have like subtle winging on it as well. This is interesting because like the one that I have um, from Paula, it's the leaf is like long, like longer shape. But this one obviously it's a rounder, rounder shape leaf in comparison. I'll try to see if I can find a picture of my current plants here or, or the cutting here so you can see it. But this one, it's a different shape. And that's why I like to get multiple of the same plants because they look different even though they're the same species because of the maybe the clone maybe the the growing environment so yep but regardless i'm very excited i would say this one is also hold up fairly well fairly well not like super well okay so the next one i want to show you is okay this is a hot plant i have a very small one um, yeah, but I want a bigger one. <laughs> and this is my Hoya Ransan. So Hoya Ransan, I think it's popular just because of like, you know, it's really beautiful splash on it. And ta-da! So yeah, I would say this is the one other than the Spa Saba and the Spa Perec Teddy Bear. This is probably the third one that's come with like really thin nibs. I was surprised because the one, the um, the Ransan I have right now, it's actually pretty succulent. Like it's, 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 I, I thought it would hold up well, but you know, when this plant come to me, it was like pretty limp. But again, you know, soak it and it's bounce back. Just give it a little bit of time. It'll be fine. Of course, you're going to lose a couple leaves, but you know, it's, it's just, you know, how it is. So yeah, really beautiful. I'm excited for this size. Whew. Okay, cool. All right, we are moving. <laughs> we are moving on. Okay, so this one. Okay, so this one I'm confused about the species because... <sighs> because like, just how it labels, I guess. So, but I believe this is the Hoya... Hoya... Hmm. Hoya vetalina. So yeah, the leaf is really, it's still kind of curly. Um, I mean, but it's still firm and this one's still really firm and succulent though. So yeah, I have a vetalina already and it grows so well. And I know this plant, if you put it in um, bright light, it will turn red or purple. So it, it's, it's supposed to be a really pretty plant. But I feel like this plant just did a little bit more rehab. And the reason I said it's confusing because it's labeled as Vetalina Change Name Joy. I don't know, I don't even know what that means, but I know that Joy is a cultivar from uh, Vetalina. So um, I don't know, maybe maybe they are confused too, but I say just from the look on it because I have both Vetalina and Joy. So I think this one looks actually more like a Vetalina, but we'll see. Well, we'll see when it's a. When, when it's, uh, you know, we have and see what it's look like more. Okay, cool. All right, so the next one I also have already. But I just, again, I just really like it. So I get another one. And this is my Hoya 
Ta-da! Round to the floor. So Hoya round to the floor is also called square leaves Hoya for obvious reason. I have a smaller one right now and I'm excited to get this larger one. Larger, because it is a smaller Hoya, so it's it's larger <laughs> at this size. But yeah, I also feature this in my uh, unique leaves. Did I? I forgot. I don't know if I feature it in my unique leaves Hoya video, but yeah, it's 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 just it's unique. It's it's square. Like how often do you see like square leaves in nature? And this is one thing that fascinates me about Hoya is it's just one of the things that fascinates me about Hoya is like how diverse like the, the, the foliage are. But yeah, really pretty. Where we succulent as well. This one hold up really well. Cool. Alright, legs. Yo, we gotta move on. <laughs> okay. It's not like I don't like to do it, but we do have a lot. So I don't want to keep you guys here for like two hours, right? Okay, so this one I never had before. I heard it from Doug. It's one of the must-have, so I order it. <laughs> so Doug is stuck from Vermont Hoyas, obviously. And this is the Hoya Anunata. Anunata. So yeah, it's 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 this like, you know, just like green succulent species. You can see the subtle veining as well. And I know this plant will turn red on the bright light. I know that it's, um, I think I ordered it too, is because, you know, other than it's like Doug's recommendation. Um, I also ordered this because um, I think I saw some pictures of this plant on the light. It looks somewhat like the penny street. So, you know, Hoya's penny street, right? It turned this like red or maroon color, like the whole leaves, right? So I want to experience with this. So I want to see if I can if it's gonna like you know turn to this color but again even if it doesn't i still really like it because it's green and succulent yay all right so legs let's talk about we really talk about this one right oh no what is this oh no we haven't because <laughs> they're all piled together so like i get confused sometimes Okay, so this is uh, one of the like, I want to I don't want to say common, but you know, um, I already, ha I have one. <laughs> okay, I have one, but I, I like it. So this is the Hoya Finesoniae. So you can see like, all my pens are like, you know, either green succulent or have meanings. You know, I just, I, I, I like those. So yeah, this is a Hoya Finesoniae. I know there is like a lot of different varieties of Hoya Finesoniae, and I don't know which one is this one. But um, it's a Finesonia. <laughs> it's it's uh it's what the um label suggests. So I have this plan already. I tried to propagate it. I experienced with the propagation with this plan, and for some reason, a Koya Finesonia it's surprisingly take surprisingly long to propagate. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's my environment. I don't know. But yeah, so um, but yeah, I think that's uh, that's an interesting observation because I cut a stove filer is not that hard to propagate, and you know I have other you know veiny hoya that is also not that hard to propagate, but for whatever reason, uh, fine sonia it's a little bit took a little bit longer. I I I root it up like at the end, um, but took longer than I expected. So I want to get a bigger one to experience more. But yeah, this one is really nice, and then you can see like other than the veining, it also have some splash on it. It's pretty. So if you know what variety of finis on the is, feel free to let me know because I don't know. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's make sure I go for every day because I'm confused. All right. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So I go over this plant many times in many of my videos because it just, I highly recommend it. It's just so easy to grow. It's so resilient it's, and it's beautiful. And if you guys have been watching my video, should know what I'm talking about already because I always call her a beast. And this is my Hoya Jennifer. So Jennifer is a cultivar from Finesonia in Incrinsetta, I want to say, but I will double check. Um, but yeah, so this girl is a beast. Like. <laughs> I think I feature it in my Vingney Hoya video because of like how easy it is to root up and how we see it in this. I import this plant multiple times and I, because of how woody and succulent it is, I thought it would take longer to root it up. But this girl is always the first one that root up, like hands down, like 
it's even bit the more uh well other than cano the canosa, but it's even bit like the more succulent, even more succulent species than 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 her. But yeah, so you can see um it's inherit the beautiful winging from the um from the uh finish song yeah, obviously, and I think it's uh. The, the, the resiliency and how vigorous it's growing, it's actually inherited from the increment sector. So, yep, really beautiful. I know the veining is not very prominent right now, I've just because it's just strict come out from the box. So uh, after we have it and give it more light, the waxy cuticle will come back and the veining will become a lot more prominent. Cool. Oh my god. I think we only have one left. Give me one second. <laughs> gonna grab it. <coughs> okay. Okay. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, that's how. Cause it's, there's so many of them. Some of them are really far away from me. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't even know. And this is the higher material I use. So I already have this one. <laughs> how many times have I said that already? So I already have this one, but I really like it. So I got another one. And this one is bigger. So yeah, Vettilio IDs, it's also a larger leaf hoyer. So you can see like this leaf is as big, as long, not big, but as as long as my face. And it also have really beautiful winging. Um, for whatever reason, um, I ordered this plan, I think four times total from overseas. And uh, for whatever reason, every time when it came to me, it's it just, it's always so thin and so weak. But this time, I want to say this time, this one from Ahoya actually come in in a like better shape. I wouldn't say it's like hold up really well. It's still kind of thin. But in comparison to the previous couple ones that I ordered from overseas, like the same species, um, it's actually hold up uh, uh, better. And after I soak it, I can like, you can see it's like, it's, it's hardened up too. So, yep. So this is the last but not least, the Hoya Vettilio IDs. So again, there's no specific order, it's just whatever close to me in the pile, I grab. <sighs> okay, it's a long video. Thank you. If you stay till this point, thank you so much for uh, for staying with me. And I hope uh, it gave you some insights of, you know, applying for import permits and, um, you know, what the highest look like you know, coming from overseas after a week in the box. And um, yeah, so like I said, I already soak it. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to, uh, you know, trim off the dead leaves and see if I need to, some of them do I need to like cut it up and soak it again. And then um, I'm going to, It's I'm either going to, if the wood system is viable, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pot it up in like a woody well drinking mix and observe it for a week to see if, you know, new roots start to come out and the plants start to rehab. Um, if the root system is like no good no more, I'm just going to cut off the whole root system and propagate it. Um, either way, I have no idea where I'm going to put all of them. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll figure it out. <laughs> I'm just going to focus at one step at a time. But yeah, so as always, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure you click like. If you want more future video, make sure you subscribe. And if you have any question at all, I know it's a lot of information. So if you have any question at all, uh, make sure that you leave in the comment below. I'm happy to answer them to my best ability. And I will see you next time. Bye.